Well, today, a year ago, the world got the news that former Zimbabwean President Robert Gabriel Mugabe had died in a hospital in Singapore. A lot of back and forth ensued about the how and where he would be laid to rest. Xavier Kasukwere is a former cabinet member in the government of President Mugabe, and he joins us now via Zoom. A very good morning to you, Mr. Kasukwere. We, we spoke to you around the time uh, last year, and the conversation then was found by Zwakanaka. What are your thoughts a year down the line? Well, a year down the line, we remember President Gabriel's immense contribution to our nation's independence, the fight for independence, uh, the land reform program that he embarked upon, the successes that he achieved in terms of education. I'm sure you have seen and uh, really the success of many thousands of youngsters who were sent even to investors in South Africa. In Zimbabwe, he expanded our universities from just one university at Independence to over 14, 15 universities. Also, he did very well in terms of the uh, um, health infrastructure across the country. President Mugabe is also one man, even though there could be conflict in our country and society, who at the end of the day find that it's important to unite the people and move your nation forward. We're speaking to a former cabinet member in the government of uh, former late President Robert Mugabe. But let's just take you now to an event that we'll be focusing on for most of the day. Uh, the Deputy President, uh, uh, President, Deputy President Mabuza has just arrived to commemorate National Police Day. Quite an important day in the calendar of the country and we'll take you there as soon as formal proceedings begin. Let's just uh, f uh, continue with our conversation uh, with Mr. Kasukwere. Um, as, as we look at developments in Zimbabwe now, how do you connect what's happening in Zimbabwe now with the time that uh, the former president, what are your thoughts about Zimbabwe's political trajectory since uh, his passing? I think uh, the Zimbabwean political trajectory remains a contested uh, political territory remains very divided, it remains without that uh, compass that should actually lead our people out of these uh, uh, very murky situations. I believe um, what we should be doing as Zimbabweans is to accept that at the end of the day, we are all one, we are one people, we must come together, find common ground and resolve whatever challenges are there. Zimbabwe has gone through serious pain before, you recall in the early days of our independence, Matabeleland, and at the end of the day, our leader sat down and hammered out the UNTA agreement that brought about peace and development in Zimbabwe. Even during the contested 2008 elections between the Morgan Trangirai Party and ZANU PF, we ended up with the government of national unity that again ushered in uh, quite the level of power. Uh, uh, stability, economic development, and so forth. And I, my view, even to this day, is that at the end of the day, every one of us, every leader, must remember there are those who are expecting the leadership to make the right decisions, make the right call, and ensure that we bring about peace, development, and growth. We cannot remain stuck in a politically charged situation and the environment that negates the aspects of economic growth, economic development, the well-being of our people. Many of the people are not really politicians. They're not interested in politics. They just want a meal on the table. And this is what we must focus on. Are we able to assure our people that their health will be looked after? Are we able to ensure that our people have their inputs to go back on the land? Are we able to ensure that there is peace and stability and tranquility in our country? These are the core requirements by society. It is not about position. And I think what we need to do is to reduce, like I've always said, let's reduce the temperature around the politics. Let's increase on those areas where we agree and to also work hard on the economy so that we can look after our people. It behoves upon everybody in leadership to ensure that every Zimbabwean is stable, is in his country, is enjoying, because we just have one country, and that is Zimbabwe. And every one of us must feel 
happy to be in the country. And I think the, my call to the leadership in Zimbabwe is unite the people, move the people together. Let us look into the future and develop. We'll spend an inordinate amount of time quarreling and bickering at the expense of progress and development. And we can't continue. We can't spend another 10 years making noises, fighting for positions. We just have to fight for those things that can better the lives of all our people. How are you currently contributing to Zimbabwe under President Emerson Mnangagwa? Uh, we know you had legal challenges in terms of uh, ability to go back and uh, court processes underway. Where are you uh, at the moment? Well, from my the legal challenges I had, those I did overcome all those. Uh, the charges that were placed on us, the so-called criminals around the president, I was acquitted. I went, I stood in the courts. In, in as much as the territory was contested, it was difficult for me, but I decided to go to Zimbabwe and face the music because I believed in my innocence. I believed we'd not done anything wrong. And this is why we were acquitted by the high court and all the cases that were placed before the courts at Kenneth Smith, they, were, they all fell and they collapsed because we had not done anything that was untoward. The, all the accusations that were used, we believe that the accusations used against us in November was basically just to facilitate the takeover of power, not that they had any substantive value per se. However, we still do not hold any pittance or grudges against what has happened. We know it is really, really unacceptable that we have to take over power using guns and so forth. But at the end of the day, it is not the personal anger, anger or injury that I've got that becomes central to national development. What we need is to respect the constitution of our country. What we need is to ensure that there is economic growth in our country. What we need to ensure is that the many people, many in our society, have, a food, have food on their tables, have a head, roof over their heads, and are living their normal lives. We need to be able to start having serious conversations and discussions about removing our nation from this era where every day the whole world looks at us as a pariah state, uh, where we have people who really can't agree. There are many countries in the world where there are differences, but there are people sit down and work on those differences. I think Zimbabwe's leadership must mature and get to a state where we say enough is enough. We're spending an ordinary amount of time quarreling over positions. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let's move our nation forward. Mr. Kasukwara, are you able to tell us about the thoughts of uh, former First Lady Ms. Grace Mugabe on the stand, just how the Mugabe family is? Well, I, I, I will not be able to speak on behalf of the Mugabe family, but I think um, we all pray that too, they should be in good health wherever they are uh, and that uh, the, the state must look after the family of the founding father of our nation. Um, the contribution made by President Mugabe was enormous for our nation and we hope and trust that she continues to receive the respect and dignity that should be accorded to her position, having been the wife of the former president of our country. What can be done to bring about a proper functioning democracy in Zimbabwe, uh, not only for the benefit of the economy, but for the benefit of the people of Zimbabwe? Um, uh, you know, President Mnangagwa says he's a listening president. He needs to convert that into a reality. He needs to be listening to the people. He needs to be engaging. There's nothing wrong with engaging and talking to your people. Even those who don't like you, talk to them. They will not kill you. Just sit across the table. Or you put on your mask if you think they'll have corona. And just have a discussion about the country. Because at the end of the day, whoever is in leadership in our country must be prepared to engage the people in this country and reduce the temperature. It is not necessary for our country to continue being a nation viewed by the whole world as a center of conflict. We can't afford this. I believe that all of us, who might have had our differences with the leadership in the country, with the way the power was taken, uh, the way we became involved in the uh, politics of our country. These are the important issues. How do we restore a proper and functioning democratic nation? How do we restore macroeconomic stability in our country? How do we create a, an economy that can really sustain the future of our people? We also have to be looking at all the issues that are being debated. And I think 
people must do away with unilateralism. Uh, for instance, when you talk about compensation to the farmers and so forth, I think the Minister of Finance in Zimbabwe right now is uh, perhaps punching above his weight. He must realize that the land issues are quite serious and central to the stability of your country. In as much as you want to follow certain issues, but you must be able to sit down, communicate, be it in the party, be it various stakeholders, and come up with solid positions that will carry with you the people of the country. The politics, the economy, you cannot separate the two. But we believe those in charge of the politics must look at these matters differently. Seek unity, seek understanding, find each other. We all have a defined period on this earth. We're not going to be here forever. I wanted so to conflict ask you, can never mark your leadership. Mr. Kasukwera, I wanted to ask you your thoughts about uh, your, the handling of South Africa, especially as AU Chair of Developments in Zimbabwe. But we're not going to go there because, as you heard me say earlier, South Africa is uh, commemorating the SAPS Service Commemoration Day and we have to go there live. But thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much.